What's up guys, it's Luminato. So before I start this, this is gonna be a little bit of an echo. I'm not in the room that I usually record these videos in. I am now in LA. So I'm filming this in the hotel. So it's just gonna be a little echoey for my stand and deliver and my WrestleMania predictions. So I just wanna give a warning for that. Um, but this is going to be for stand and deliver. We know stand and deliver is going to be on WrestleMania Saturday morning. Um, it is going to be 1 p.m. on the East Coast and 10 p. Well, 10 a.m. on the West Coast. So we're, there is seven matches, I believe, and we're just going to start off with the match that I think will start off the night, which is now going to be a six women's ladder match for the NXT Women's Championship. It was first going to be a triple threat between. Gigi, Zoe, and one other person. Then it turned into a fatal four-way where Tiffany and Lyra earned their shot in the match. And then Indy earned the final spot in the last chance qualifier. But then Roxanne Perez made her return and she was medically cleared to compete at Stand and Deliver. So now it's a six-pack challenge. Um, I think that this will be the send-off match for Indy and Zoe. I think they're main roster ready. I think Indy's been main roster ready for a while now. Zoe, I think there's nothing really left for her to do if she's not going to win the title. Lyra and Gigi, I just am kind of canceling them out. I don't think they're going to be... They're going to be factors in the match, but they're not going to be factors to win the title. Um, so I think this is down to Roxanne and Tiffany. Tiffany, she's... One of the fastest rising stars that we've seen in the women's division in a very long time. And Roxanne is NXT sweetheart, I feel like. Everybody loves Roxanne on NXT. And she didn't really lose the title. So it's great to see her actually defend it at Stand and Deliver. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I feel like it's going to go down to one of those two. Who I want to win, I'm a Tiffany Stratton fan, so of course I want her to win. And I also think she's going to win. Same thing that I said with Indy and Zoe. I think Roxanne is really main roster ready. And I know she's only been on NXT for not even a year now. Um, since her NXT debut, I should say. But I just think she's ready for the main roster. And I would love to see her have couple face-offs with a couple of these women and create new spots on NXT and to bring a new champion up with Tiffany Stratton. So my prediction is Tiffany will become the new NXT Women's Champion. Next up we have for the NXT Tag Team Championships, we have Gallus, um, Mark Coffey, and Wolfgang taking on I was going to say Pretty Deadly, but they're hosting. Oh, yeah, Pretty Deadly is hosting the show. But back to the tag team match. It is going to be Gallus defending the titles against Tony D'Angelo and Channing Stax Lorenzo and the Creed brothers, um, Julius and Brutus. Now, this match is going to be very interesting. I am surprised that Tony D and Channing went after the tag team titles. Um... And I feel like this story, the storyline has kind of just been very last minute. Like, they had Pretty Deadly hosting, so they just had to figure out what to do for this. And this was kind of the only thing that they came up with. So, but it's it's going to be a good match. Um, I think that Gallus will win. I don't see the Creed Brothers winning the titles again. Maybe they're going to get called up. I don't know. But I just don't see them winning the titles again. And then... Tony D and Channing, I don't really think they're ready for the titles. I would love to see them build themselves up as a team because it's kind of just been singles partners um, with them. So I think Gallus has a good thing going so far, so they should keep the titles. Next up, we have an eight-person tag team match where the winner will get Chase U. Um, it is going to be Chase U, Andre Chase, Duke Hudson, Thea Hale, and Tyler Bate. Taking on the schism, which is Jagger, um, Rip Fowler, Joe Gacy, and Ava Ray. Now, this will be Ava's debut match. And what a way to do it then in Los Angeles during WrestleMania weekend. I wonder how she's going to do. Um, she's very good on the mic. Obviously, her 
dad is Dwayne The Rock Johnson, so of course she's going to be good on the mic. But can she live up to his expectation? And it sucks that people, well, including me, are already putting like this, can she be better? But we're obviously going to th think um, that for the rest of her career because her dad is The Rock. But I'm excited to see how she does. I'm excited to see all these people on the show. I think they all deserve a spot on the show. They've been, especially Chase U, has been very entertaining for the past year. Um, I don't think this match will be very long, though. I think it will kind of be one of the shorter matches. But I hope they get enough time to showcase. Um, but my prediction is I feel like Chase U will win. Just based off of, I don't think they'll have, I think they have a good thing going with Chase U to then just have Chase U lose all control over Chase U. So I think that Chase U will win um, this match. Next up, we have a fatal five-way match for the North American Championship. It is going to be an open challenge where Wesley defends the title against Dragon Lee, Ilya Dragunov, JD McDonough, and Axiom. Now, Axiom earned his spot in the Battle Royal. The rest of the three competitors um, were handpicked by Wesley. This match is going to be incredible. A lot of people were saying that this should have got the ladder match, but I feel like we've seen the ladder match with the North American title. Why don't we switch things up? And if you go back to 2020, which I don't think a lot of people would want to do, the women were originally going to get a ladder match for the number one contenders ship, but then COVID happened. It didn't really get to happen in front of a live crowd and a big stage like that. So maybe give the women another try. And these five men are, are going to do great, whether it involved ladders or not. Um, but my prediction, honestly, I think that Wesley is going to retain the title and here's why Axiom I don't I just don't think he's ready for the title just yet um he is a very good competitor but he is I I just don't see championship could like championship holder in him yet Elia and JD McDonough I feel like they're gonna battle each other and they're gonna cost each other and then maybe Dragon Lee could be the, he's the wild card, I feel like. We, me, I haven't really seen much of anything from him. Um, but this match is going to be great, but I just think Wesley is going to walk out the winner. Um, similar to what I said about Gallus, Wesley has a good thing going, and I just don't want to see that momentum stop. Um, next up, we have an unsanctioned match with Johnny Gargano taking on Grayson Waller. This match is going to be great. Two of my favorites going at it. I'm glad that they picked up the storyline from when Johnny originally left WWE. And it's going to be great to see them just go all out. I wonder what they'll put this... If it's not first, and it's definitely not going to be last, I wonder where they'll put this match in the card. Um, so it's going to be great. And, oh, I have to say, I wonder how these superstars are going to do with the ladder match and how the unsanctioned and all that at like 10 in the morning or 9 in the morning like it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how much these wrestlers put their bodies through knowing that it's so early in the morning um but my prediction I think that Johnny will win to be honest with you um I just think that Grayson may be ready for the main roster and I think it would make a lot more sense to have Johnny win and then Grayson go to the main roster and they can continue the feud there. Um, bigger mainstream audience can see it. Because um, this is a long storyline that's been just waiting to have this final resolution um, for, what, 18, 19 months. So it's going to be a very good match, but my prediction is Johnny. Um, next up we have for the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships, we have Isla Dawn and Alba Fire taking on Kiana James and Fallon Henley. Fallon and Kiana are defending the titles. I feel so bad for Kaden and Katana because they held the titles for a very long time and were very good champions, had a couple of good defensive defenses, and then they just lost the titles out of nowhere and still haven't gotten a rematch. 
And I think it's obvious that Kiana and Fallon were just transitional champions for Alba and... I was going to say Ava. Alba and Isla. So it's going to be... A, I think it's going to be a good match. I think all four of these ladies can put on a good match. Um, but similar to what I said about the multi-person tag, I think it's just going to get probably cut short and not that much attention to it. Um, but it's going to be a really good match, I feel like. And Alba and Isla are going to be new NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. And now we move on to our main event, the youngest main event in, in NXT. Um, in WrestleMania weekend history, it is going to be Braun Breaker defending the NXT Championship against Carmelo Hayes. Now this match, everybody has been waiting to see, including me. I've been waiting to see this match for months now. Um... They are two of the top stars um, in NXT. I mean, when you think of NXT, you think of Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes. Um, and they've never had a interaction with each other in ring on TV. They maybe have done a couple live events on the NXT circuit, but they have not touched each other throughout the entire time they've been on NXT together. And it's going to be great to see them go one-on-one um, -on -one with each other. It's going to be a great main event. If they give them like 15, 20 minutes, I know they can put on a banger of a match. And I think it's time for Carmelo to be the face and the top of NXT. Braun Breaker, he's had a pretty good run. Um, but I feel like his run has kind of died down as of recently. He's kind of lost steam and... His competitors have kind of, no offense to people like Apollo and people like Jinder, but his challenges have kind of like reduced as interesting wise. Like Carmelo was kind of this, he's brought back the wow factor that I feel like we've been waiting to see. Like Apollo, he was kind of, Apollo and Jinder were kind of just transitions for Carmelo to finally step up. So it's going to be, a very good match, and it's going to be a very good pay-per-view. Um, so, yes, NXT Stand and Deliver is tomorrow morning at 1 p.m. Eastern, 9 Pacific. It's going to be a great show. I will be there, so I'll um, make a video about that. Um, but like, comment, and subscribe. Leave your predictions in the comment section below. And keep, stay tuned.